as I mentioned earlier, oscillometry, lung oscillometry is going to be the future of lung function test. What is lung oscillometry? In lung oscillometry, we generate pressure waves of different frequencies, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, these are the different frequencies of pressure waves that are generated. Now, sometimes the pressure waves are sound waves. Sound is a pressure wave. And then you can generate sound waves of different frequencies. Now, these frequencies, these pressure waves are then forced into the respiratory tract inside your lung. The force inside during a normal tidal breathing. So spirometry is a, is a test where you can take a deep inhalation, flow very forcefully for a long period of time. In oscillometry, you just do normal breathing. And while you're doing that normal breathing, these, these pressure waves are forced into the lung. Forced oscillation technique or lung oscillometry, they're forced into the, into the lung. And what you measure is the change in the pressure and the change in the flow. Now, the change in the pressure and the change in the flow will give you these parameters, resistance, inertance, elastics. Let, let us not go into the details of that. But the shape of the curve that you get in a lung oscillometry is very different from spirometry. Spirometry, you get the volume time graph and the flow volume. Group. In oscillometry, you get an oscillogram. So the resistance line is over here. The reactance line is over here. This is the resistance at 5 hertz frequency. This is the resistance at 20 hertz frequency. This is the reactance. So reactance at 5 hertz is negative. Then it crosses the line. The point at which it crosses the line is called resonant frequency or FRS. And the triangular area that is formed over here from X5 to resonant frequency, this triangular area is called area of reactance. And so these are the parameters that you get in oscillometry, not FEV1, not FVC. You get R5, R20, R5 minus R20, resonant frequency, reactance at 5 hertz, area of reactance, and so on. And then the shape of the curve that you get is like this. The blue dotted line is a normal healthy individual. This is an asthmatic before taking a bronchodilator, after taking a bronchodilator. Before taking a bronchodilator, after taking a bronchodilator for reactance. So this portion is for resistance. This portion is for reactance. So this is how you find, this is the shape of the curve that you find in asthma. This is the shape of the curve that you find in COPD. So just by merely looking at the shape of the curve, <clears throat> you can make a diagnosis of asthma and COPD on lung oscillometry. The other tool that we mentioned is bronchial challenge test. And the bronchial challenge test is a measure of bronchial hyperresponsiveness. And what is bronchial hyperresponsiveness? These patients are very sensitive to cold air, exercise, hypertonic saline, and some of these inhalation of these chemicals like histamine, methacholine, uh, adenosine monophosphate, and PGD2. Now, what you do is you administer these chemicals through a nebulizer in these patients at different concentrations. So here is a concentration, low concentration to high concentration. Now, and then you measure the change in the FEV1 with the help of a spirometry test. So you give them a nebulizer of methacholine or histamine. <laughs> at that concentration, did the FEV1 fall? There's no fall over here. At a higher concentration, there was a sudden fall. It increased to 20%. The fall was 20%. Then if the fall comes at very low concentrations, of it, this is indicative of severe bronchial hyperresponsiveness. If, the, if it crosses the 20% fall line later on, this is at a low concentration, this is at a higher concentration, then it is mild bronchial hyperresponsiveness. And in normal healthy individuals, they don't fall for a, even, even with very high concentrations. So normal healthy individual, even up to 8, 8 milligram per ml of histamine or methacholine, they still don't cross the 20% uh, line. This means that they are not bronchial hyperresponsive, moderate bronchial hyperresponsive, mild. So this is mild bronchial hyperresponsiveness. This is moderate or severe bronchial hyperresponsiveness. So you can use some of these chemicals to arrive at a diagnosis of bronchial hyperresponsiveness, which is a hallmark feature of.